to you right so what are we going to talk about in this particular lecture is first what are the things that led to titanic disaster sorry somebody was asking to and then uh, why are the windows of aircraft in the shape they are in now and finally uh, the present covid situation where we know in lot of places thermal scanners are used to test our temperature to find out if probably we are a possible case of corona infection so there is a replacement for that also and you will see there's physics involved in almost everything so let us start with titanic it's a little more interesting okay so now titanic when it was first built it was labeled to be the ship that cannot be sunk at all and uh, they said this particular ship is one of the best and according to our builders even the worst possible situation it is like the two ships colliding it is not going to sink why did they say that what really happened we'll see as as and when it goes so the titanic was quite long 882.75 feet and the tonnage was 46000 and all it had seven decks seven decks means it's like seven floors it had seven decks and the estimated speed was 23 to 24 knots that is the maximum speed that was possible the current day ships can reach up to a maximum of 30 knots but titanic was able to go up to 23 to 24 knots okay now timeline so 10th april was the time when titanic started its sail it was from uh, england to the us and it set sail on 10th april 14th april 11:40 pm titanic got a warning that there was an iceberg ahead so there was some human error also involved is what i heard the radio operator of titanic was getting plenty of messages earlier about the iceberg but i believe he was actually sending messages from first class passengers to their near and dear ones that they were traveling by titanic and uh, he chose to ignore these messages at one point he even told i believe these people please shut up so by the time he received the message it was actually 11:40 pm and the iceberg was just ahead so by the time they could realize they went and rammed into the iceberg 11:50 pm within 10 minutes of getting the warning water had poured in and risen 14 feet in the front part of the ship and by 2:20 pm the titanic was broken when i say broken most of the passengers were sinking or most of them froze to death why they froze to death that also we'll see and 15th april 4 10 pm that is from midnight to morning around 4 hours the first lifeboat came to pick up the survivors so which means had the, the people in the titanic been able to hold on for 4 hours all of them would have been saved there was a major error of course there were not many lifeboats and uh, they thought lifeboats are a waste and they didn't take in uh, many lifeboat that was one thing and uh, in each lifeboat uh, you could accommodate quite a bit of people but uh, only the few first class people were uh, uh, accommodated that's why very few could be saved from titanic so now let's just see what led to it so before the titanic met with this disaster there was a trial breaking they found trial breaking was something you when you go by your bike or your car you apply brake and see when it stops so similarly a trial breaking was done and this operator when he got the message that uh, there was an iceberg ahead he he had an estimated 37 seconds to respond to the warning when i say 37 seconds from the place where the titanic was to where it, it would go and ram into the iceberg they had only 37 seconds so they had 37 seconds to think what to do to maneuver with titanic and save a disaster so the distance remaining was only 900 feet 900 feet is uh, very less for a ship so what the bottom image you see is the titanic which was recovered later on and it was traveling at a speed of uh, the velocity of 22 knots 22 knots is very near to its maximum speed of 24 knots so now what happens is it was traveling very fast the iceberg was also looming ahead so now let us see what could have averted now deceleration required titanic was traveling at a velocity of 10.8 meter per second that is i have converted the knots into a meter per second and the time remaining was 195 seconds so which means you know acceleration is rate of change of velocity so deceleration is also rate of change of velocity in the negative sense so which means titanic required a deceleration of 10.8 by 195 seconds which is 0.055 meter per second which 6 seconds squared was never achieved 
then what happened was we'll see more more of uh, the other three later on what happened was the material with which the titanic bill was built was not good enough and it did not undergo the kind of fracture or the kind of dent it should have actually take uh, happen so there was a titanic was supposed to be an engineering disaster because the material fractured easily that was the second concept we'll see a little more of these as and when we go inertia inertia was also involved in the titanic crash so we would have studied in your school about inertia the first law newton's law first law of uh, motion every object continues in a state of rest or of uniform motion along a straight line unless acted upon by an external force just meaning that any object cannot stay in its position easily so titanic was a huge ship now what happens is when can it actually overcome all this number one it had to be it had to be traveling slow then it had to be small it has to have sufficient time it was not traveling slow it was traveling extremely fast so it could actually not change its course second thing is the load has to be lesser that was also not there because titanic was traveling to its full capacity plus it did not have the time so it was not sufficient time to alter this so there was titanic could not overcome this inertia buoyancy so what is buoyancy so you take something and put it on a water put it on water it floats that's buoyancy buoyancy is the upward thrust which is exerted by fluids so you hold a paper and uh, blow it what happens the paper paper blows on top that's buoyancy so buoyancy the necessary buoyancy was never achieved we'll see that in detail now okay first before discussing that let us see how the titanic was built so you see the red lines at the bottom they are all known as watertight compartments so every ship when it is built will have numerous watertight compartments at the bottom so even when you go in a boat you see you will be sitting in the boat at the bottom you'll have an extra space with logs on it so watertight compartments are built in such a way that it will give buoyancy to the ship so why does the ship generally float on water the ship has lesser density than the salt water so it floats on water to so give an extra buoyancy you have this watertight compartments which are generally free and titanic was built in such a way that so you see what so many watertight compartments here there are there were around 16 watertight compartments here so what was told was even if water enters inside three of the watertight compartments titanic will still be able to sink that did not happen water entered in inside four five watertight compartments and even the sixth one so what happened the titanic started to tilt in this way that was what happened this is the basic build of titanic so now going into the physics involved into this titanic okay this is another image this is the original image of titanic which was recovered later on so what this red line shows this is how titanic fracture or let me put it easily this is how the titanic broke so what happened was just a minute somebody is in the meeting i'll admit okay so what happened was once this is a crack putting it in scientific words once there's a crack that is initiated that crack should stay where it is for safety purpose what happened in titanic was once the crack was initiated it did not stay there what happened was this crack went on spreading like this or putting it in scientific words you say a crack initiation and then there was a crack propagation like this so this is the original image from titanic now let us see so this is how the titanic broke the titanic actually broke into two pieces so now no now let us go on right this is the kind of physics that was been involved in the fracture of titanic so first is could it have been stopped maybe if the deceleration had occurred earlier it could have been stopped what do i mean by saying earlier number one they did not receive the message earlier that is one thing number two they wasted 37 precious seconds in deciding what to do number three this is something some of you would have come across sonar sonar is a kind of sensor sound nav navigation and ranging sonar was not used then had sonar been used way back probably titanic would have heard had sufficient warning but then there is another uh, version also at that point of time 
the sea was full of icebergs i don't know how far that is true but this iceberg was really really huge so this was the first physics concept second material disaster so this is one word which is being used often titanic was an engineering disaster the some of you would have studied material science in which you have studied about you would have studied about fracture uh, you would have also differentiated between a brittle fracture and ductile fracture let me make things simpler for you suppose you are driving a car you lose control the car goes and rams against a wall what will happen to your car the front portion will probably have a dent am i right you are driving a car you are traveling by a bus whatever a bike or whatever if you go and ram into something your the part of the car or the bike will have a dent so what is happening there you are having a ductile fracture there so initially there is a disfiguration that is going on so could it be applied to titanic yes that was what expected to happen in titanic it went and rammed into the iceberg but what happened was instead of a ductile fracture or putting in other words the titanic uh, vessel should have been actually dented but what happened it cracked into two it began cracking so what happened there was no ductile fracture there was a brittle fracture what was the reason for this brittle fracture number 1 titanic was travel traveling in the ocean at a temperature of minus 2 degree c sub zero temperature so what happened was there was a material transition so the ship lost its strength and from a normal material it changed into a brittle material that was number 1 so that is why it said i am saying it underwent a brittle fracture rather than a ductile fracture so we have already seen two different concepts one is uh the acceleration or the deceleration the time factor next thing is material the material could not sustain at sub zero temperature and a crack was initiated where a dent should have happened so what happened a crack initiation second thing is what happened was this crack which was initiated had so the material should have been better built so that there would have been only a ductile fracture the third thing is inertia as i spoke about earlier the ship was huge so what really happened what when it tried the captain did try to turn the ship see that's what you do right you are by riding a bike suppose something cap, uh, comes in front of you what do you try to do you try to turn the bike and go right so that is what titanic also tried here he tried to turn please uh, note that the steering in titanic was very much like the power steering you have in cars now so which means the steering was extremely good it tried to turn but the titanic was so huge when it tried to turn what happened was the side of the titanic so we have already seen the side of the titanic went and rammed into the iceberg rather than the front of the titanic so what happened was this portion of the titanic this portion of the titanic went and rammed into the iceberg instead of the front had it actually rammed from the front probably the damage would have been a little better but since it rammed it it is it grazed the side actually grazed into the iceberg so all these portions they broke and water started seeping in and once water started seeping in what happened was water started spreading like this so what happens what this part of the ship becomes heavier compared to this so there is an inequality in the mass so what happened this was not able to a uh, balance with this now you can imagine a cantilever so the external bending moment was much much more so what happens since this mass was more and this was not able to manage so ultimately this weight started increasing and what did you see in titanic this crack and ultimately titanic broke into two so this is the kind of thing failures it had so there was no deceleration there was a material disaster and uh, the inertia part was also playing a part and finally buoyancy buoyancy is what is floating when you don't know swimming what do you do you take a rubber tube hold it hold on to it and uh, try to float in water what does it give you it gives you buoyancy you cannot float on the water because you are denser so now the entry of water inside the water tight compartments what did it do it modified the density and not it's not more about a weight alone it modified the density of the ship so when something becomes denser than water it tends to sink rather than float so which means the necessary buoyancy was never achieved and titanic began to sink 
not only that people also say there was one more physics concept involved because of the extremely cold weather there was an optical illusion and the iceberg to the naked eye did not appear very far it actually i mean it actually appeared very far rather than near and that was another reason for the disaster so you can see just in one titanic disaster which we have always seen as a movie there was so much of physics involved i repeat so first is acceleration opposite is deceleration velocity rate of change of velocity second thing is material disasters some of you would have studied uh, for people who have studied mechanical branches please go back and look at your ttt diagrams you will understand what do i mean this by this material disaster third thing was inertia the huge ship could not have could not change its position easily because of the inertia and the final thing is the buoyancy could never be achieved plus a footnote probably uh this also uh, optical illusion may have played a part but there is no proof for that so there's one more person joining okay this was one uh, physics involved in titanic let me go to another example we have all drawn aeroplanes have we ever wondered why the windows of aeroplanes are shaped like this they could always be square right like we have it at our homes uh one probably we may think yeah it is for an aesthetic sense it will look beautiful if it's shaped like that yeah that may be there but what happens is i think you are all aware the insides of a airplane is generally pressurized when a plane takes off people who have traveled by air would have experienced you will have a block in the ear right so the, all this is due to a change in pressure so which means the inside of a airplane is generally pressurized and just to manage this pressure only your airplane is like a cylinder that is the shape of the airplane so what happens is your in, the insides of the airplane are pre, is pressurized and the pressure is going through the airplane body so what happens is when it passes through if the window is circular or oval like this the pressure is distributed evenly or putting it in engineering terms let me say the stress will flow smoothly along all these ways suppose it is like this what happens let us not speculate i'll tell you what really happened back in 1953 first time they started flying airplanes at a great height so there was this flight called de havilland flight where they started flying at a greater height and uh, they started pressurizing the cabin inside and what happened was within one year they had three accidents there were 43 people who were de dead three accidents within a year 43 fatalities they didn't understand why their flights were repeatedly crashing so obviously people began to tell dv haviland flights are hopeless don't travel by them and all that and finally they discovered the culprit was window shape like this so what happens is this pressure is exerted more is concentrated more in the four corners and when the pressure is concentrated more in the four corners what is hap happening here there is a breaking there is a fracture which will go on and this window will probably even be blown off and it will lead to an accident or i am now i spoke in terms of physics let me now put it in terms of engineering so what happens when a flight takes off the insides of the flight is being pressurized there is an increased pressure inside the flight when the flight lands the pressurized situation is being removed again when the flight takes off the insides are pressurized again when it lands the pressure is removed so what is happening there is a cyclic stress when the plane is flying there is an increased stress when the plane has landed the stress is being removed so some of you have studied about this also cyclic stress fatigue there is a fatigue that is being created in the airplanes that is why if they have a square window the corners will crack and the airplane will definitely meet with a accident so that's what is being given here on a perfectly rounded cylinder stress flow smoothly so what will the stress to pressure it flow easily like this through the material a flow that is interrupted by introduction of a window if the window is oval stress levels are evenly balanced else what happens if they are not oval the stress gets concentrated in the corners this is another factor this is another thing where i want to speak about physics yes there are a lot more examples i'll stick to one more example before i wind up this lecture 
the covid's present covid situation before i go into what is being uh, shown here we have all seen how corona testing is being done it is not actually corona it's more covid 19 because it is a corona virus has been there for quite some time but covid 19 is corona virus disease 19 which came in 2019 some of you would know this so they conduct what is known as pcr test uh, widely and you all know in the middle there was something called as rapid testing which was uh, which, which was to be tried by tamil nadu and finally they said rapid testing is not good of course there are reasons for that and now what is being undertaken is pcr testing it is more biology based testing and the results of this pcr testing whether a person is covid positive or not will come to the person maybe from a couple of minutes or to a couple of days depending on how far the infection has gone so this is a biology based testing and we will think what do we have to do you we have a lot to do so israeli scientists have now developed a method wherein the covid test results are available within a few minutes now you know when you go for shopping when you try to get inside shops what do they do they have thermal scanners to see if you have a temperature but that is not totally dependable because thermal scanner again is something related to you engineers and physicists because what is happening there there you are using an instrumentation you are using a sensor ece people you are using a sensor and uh, there is a conversion from image into reading so again there there's a lot of physics and a lot of engineering involved when you are using a thermal scanner but that is not totally dependable because there are a lot of people who are covid positive who don't have a temperature so this particular breath test i'm sorry this particular breath test which has been advocated by israeli scientists it has been put forward for testing and it says there's a success rate is quite high to the range of 90% it's a very small one just like your uh, thermal scanner so what happens is it contains a chip with densely packed sensors a chip and a densely packed sensor they are using physics principles and any ece students here you will be able to associate it with a to associate yourself with a chip and densely packed sensors so what does this chip do it is able to capture the tiny particle what do you mean what do i mean by the tiny particle and your question may be it will capture anything so what is it, what is so special about covid so covid virus is a nanoparticle or a quantum dot which has a diameter between 100 nanometer to 140 nanometer but most of the other virus are smaller so when when uh, covid with the onset of covid there was a lot of talk that was happening that covid uh, virus is a little larger than the others so what happens the trapping or uh, whatever is easier than the smaller ones so covid virus has a size between 100 nanometer to 140 nanometer and it also has electrical properties this was a news to me also it is a positively charged rna strand covid virus is a positively charged rna strand so the, the, it has a particular size and it has some electrical properties so it is detected using methods the world of physics and photonics and electrical engineering so the, you may have negatively charged uh, uh, sensors you can also have sensors which are able to filter these out suppose you filtering just imagine it imagine things like you want to filter out something you want to filter out sand what will you do you'll probably even take a bit of cloth and filter out sand suppose you want to filter fi final part you want to filter larger particles even your hand is not uh, needed you can uh, filter out in any other method so your filter size depends on the particle size and the reaction depends on the field electrical are on its electrical properties so this handheld device what does it do it captures tiny particles from the breath so you can just breathe into it including any virus it can capture the virus the chip then reads it through spectroscopy through what tetrahertz tetrahertz is 10 power 12 hertz so it takes only about 20 seconds to read this and maybe a few more seconds to analyze there are a few mathematical calculations involved and immediately it tells whether the person is positive or negative maximum is this uh, testing kit will take only 1 minute to give back the result whether the person is positive or negative so covid situation which is more biology based also had a lot of physics to it so not necessarily physics if you are engineers you need not think about just physics to it but what you can think about here here is here are the sensors a chip 
here is the electrical field which you have to consider and um, of course the instrument base so there's a lot of ec people there's a, there are a lot of uh, electrical people and for the calculations and the conversions you probably will require computer science people but for knowing all this, you must know the basic involved, which is which comes from the basic science. We have seen three different examples. Now let us just see the various fields where you can use physics. If you are going to be in biotech, you will definitely use computational uh, analysis. So application of molecular physics techniques, quantum mechanics, molecular force fields, they all involve physics. So if you are going to be a civil engineer, so your first semester you would have read about uh, elastical properties of materials. So the elastical properties, distribution of load, you could, you could ask yourself, uh, why do bridges have triangular supports? These are things you could ask yourself. There's a lot of physics involved in it. If you are a mechanical branch, I've spoken so much about mechanical branches only now. Any material design, material behavior, loss of, loss of motion, I'm just, I'm just speaking about a few, but there are a lot more involved in mechanical branches. If you're a computer science engineer, you have all would have, you all would have heard about self-driven cars by Google now, Waymo. Waymo is a self-driven car by Google. This involves uh, reaction to inertia, then uh, sensors, and a lot of programming. So you when you are doing this programming, you should know the basic physics, basic physics involved to carry on with your programming. Similarly, computer science, you will also be related to this biotech because when you are using all these molecular physics softwares, who writes the code? It's a computer science students. Actually, I was handling a subject called uh, uh, bioinformatics, special elective, where there was a lot of computer science involved in writing the codes uh, with a little of biology. I think biotech students would probably have a subject like that, but there was a lot of computer science code that was involved and it's very interesting. And any design of hardware would also involve a thorough knowledge of physics. And uh, the recent hardwares are even exploring nanotechnology. So this is where physics and computer science is related. Electronics, yes, electronics we know. The physics of semiconductors, sensors, everything involves physics. And then electrical engineering, it primarily focuses on applying electricity and magnetism principles from physics to make useful devices and materials. So your question would be, so you think a knowledge of physics will make me thorough. What I am trying to tell you is, with the knowledge of physics, your application knowledge will improve a lot. If it's not just physics, again, I'm speaking about your knowledge of physics, chemistry, and mathematics will make you strong in the basics. And once you start experimenting, you'll be able to apply yourself better. I'd like to quote a small example. When uh, COVID uh, infection started, government actually wanted ventilators to be made. Somebody, can you please mute? Government wanted ventilators to be made because they felt that there will be a shortage of ventilators. One of our own first year students called Balasubramanian, he designed an automatic handheld ventilator, which was appreciated and taken into account by Dr. Vijay Kumar, who is the state coordinator of Indian Medical Association and is the head of uh, COVID task force. And I I'd, I'd also, before closing off, I'd also like to uh, appreciate my first year students for the past two years. They have taken into consideration all these material properties and uh, two batches have actually published papers in UGC journals and uh, Scopus journals. So students who are listening to this, please try to do even better. I am sure your staff will be more than willing to help on this. Your labs will also be available. And uh, please try to involve yourself better and uh, give back. I think uh, that should be it from my side. I, I hope I made myself clear. In case there are any doubts in this and there are any, any extra questions from you all, you are welcome to ask questions. I enjoy taking questions. So any questions related to any of these uh, concepts,